Welcome to Paranormal, Episode 9. The topic for our episode today is RH negative blood factor. Is it proof of alien hybridization or Nephilim hybridization? And we have some of the usual uh, guests, the partners in crime. Uh, Doug Overmeyer is with us, Brian Gadawa, Doug Van Dorn, and Trey Strickland. But we have a, a special co host guest uh, for this one, my pastor. Uh, at Grace Church Bellingham in Bellingham, Washington, Dax Swanson. And you might be wondering, well, why would you invite your pastor uh, to this particular episode? Uh, he has a medical background. So, Dax, why don't you introduce yourself? Well, first, it's with fear and trembling that I'm your pastor, Mike. That's, <laughs> that's, that's a difficult thing. But I have to say, yeah, my background is in medicine. I went to Princeton University. I did my medical training at the University of California, San Francisco. Um, I even did a, a bit of research there in the surgery department with states of anemia and blood. So this particular topic I'm familiar with, though I've not done particular research into the RH factor. Okay. Uh, yeah. But you know a good, you know a lot about blood. <laughs> <laughs> and there's life in the blood, right? Yeah. I mean, you more or less have to, again, as a, as a doctor, a physician, you know, we, I, I asked Dax to be on this, you know, to sort of decipher, um, the um, you know the blood talk in what we read and also some of the genetics as well and what we did read for this time we we, we focused on one uh, article and it was a paper by uh, Dr. Ellen Tarr who is an associate professor of microbiology and immunology at Midwestern University in Glendale Arizona and her paper was entitled everything you know about being RH negative is wrong and this was a paper that she delivered at the CSICon, the SciCon. Again, that's a skeptic organization in 2016, so last year in Las Vegas. And I came across uh, the, the list of speakers for that event last year. And when I saw her uh, paper, I, I emailed her and said, you know, hey, can you give me an advanced copy of, of the paper that you're going to deliver? And she did. And so you know, we've been sitting on this topic because I wanted to wait until um, her paper had been published. It's been published at Skeptical Inquirer. So if you're a subscriber to that, you would be able to get the whole paper. Uh, you can get little snippets of it in interviews with her uh, online. But we will post the link to the uh, Skeptical Inquirer uh, you know, site where her paper is is located. So if you wanted to you know, subscribe, or I guess, I don't know if they give you a purchase option or not for an individual article, but you could get it. And I've, I've also posted, even though this wasn't our reading, but uh, I've also posted two uh, medical journal articles just, again, to make the point that this is not an impenetrable conundrum in the medical community. RH blood uh, factor is, is well known. The genetics of it is, you know, there, there's a solid knowledge of that. Uh, and so the, the two articles that we'll post along with the link to TARS uh, material, which was our reading for this episode, uh, is an article entitled, you know, one of them is RH Blood Group System, a review. It's published by the journal Blood, as you could guess, has something to do with blood. Uh, blood, that's volume 95, issue number two. That was in 2000. And it's published by the American Society of Hematology at Penn State. And the same journal, I, I posted a second article uh, entitled The Genetic Basis of RHD Positive and RHD Negative Blood Group Polymorphism as Determined by Southern Analysis. And Dak, you'll be proud of me. I looked up Southern Analysis. So it refers to the Southern blot method used in molecular biology for detecting specific DNA sequences. So Again, listeners can go up. You can download those. Both of those are freely accessible online, and they're very technical. You know, you'd more or less have to have a medical background or, or you know some sort of genetics background to really understand what you're reading there. But I post them to, again just to make the point, reinforce the point that this is not an impenetrable mystery. Uh, this is not something as often in the fringe community. You know, someone will latch on to something they don't understand. 
and say, oh, the, the academic community is mystified, you know, but we have the answer. And, and this, this unknown, confusing thing that we don't really understand means this. And that's what we have going with the RH negative uh, issue. So I want to open with Tar's beginning of her paper, just so that listeners get a, a feel for it. And then we'll just jump into the discussion. She writes, the plus or minus following the A, B, or O blood type indicates the presence or absence of a protein on the surface of human red blood cells that is referred to as the RH factor. RH stands for rhesus. That's R-H-E-S-U-S. However, this protein is not found on the surface of rhesus monkey red blood cells. The human protein was renamed to D antigen over 50 years ago, but the original term, the RH, and its connotations of a factor specifically shared between rhesus monkeys and some humans have remained in use despite the inaccuracy. The function of this protein was not immediately apparent, and there is a great deal of speculation on the implications of being RH negative versus RH positive. These include, but are not limited to, non-human extraterrestrial ancestors, or associations with physical traits, or high IQ, or sensitivity to psychic paranormal phenomena, and lastly, disease resistance. The sense that RH negative individuals are special persists, despite the lack of scientific data. The goal of this article is to address various claims regarding being RH negative. Now, that's her opening, and I think it, it you know, it, it introduces pretty well what, what you're going to get in the article. And I think for our discussion, you know, what we should do is defer to Dax uh, at the beginning here, at least for the first couple of questions that, that I have written down in my notes. But Dax, can you give us the lay definition, the, the, you know, the layman understanding of what RH negative means? I, I think you read it pretty well there, Mike. <laughs> RH negative well, is the presence. I'm of sure a- you'll do a better job. <laughs> Well, your your blood on the outside, your blood cell has a membrane that kind of holds it together and and little proteins are dotted around there and and one of the protein complexes is is uh, named after the this finding that they did you know many years ago on with rhesus monkeys and agglutination and immunology. But I guess the lay piece would be is that there are um, proteins on the outside of your blood cell that can be seen by the environment one of them is this d antigen or d protein that that's been labeled the rh factor and if you have it you're rh positive that means it's there if you don't have it then you're rh negative why why did this become uh, sort of important to determine you know medically why why was this a you know big deal in discovering this oh it's a it's a really big deal in medicine because of what happens in pregnancy. This is the main area that it has come up. Um, you know, blood typing, which is A, B, and O, and A, B, th- those were discovered. And then it was discovered there were still moms who were giving birth where their infants were having uh, hemolytic anemia. So it was the mom's system, if you will, was attacking the baby's blood. And they didn't know why, because the, the blood types were the same. Mm-hmm. And they figured out that it was there was another protein that was involved, and it was this Rh factor. So I mean, if if the baby if the baby did or didn't have it, or or does it work both directions? There was a problem. No, only one way. This is really a talk that is about immunology as much as anything else, but mm-hmm. it only happens with an Rh negative mom. So mom's immune system has not seen uh, this protein. But then all of a sudden, she has a baby who's RH positive. And the first baby doesn't matter. It just exposes her body to it. The body says, oh, we don't know that. We don't know this foreign intruder. And so the next child, the second child, will have trouble because mom's primed, mom's body is primed to attack blood cells it doesn't recognize. Hmm. So it's really the only problem is with an RH negative mom, a mom that doesn't have this protein on her blood cells, and an RH positive child that does have it. 
Okay. Can you give us a simple description of how Tar discusses the uh, the genetic explanation for this? In other words, why you know her her article you know talks about how and lots of other sources too, but how a minority of the human population is Rh negative doesn't have this particular protein on on their blood cells. So she gave a genetic explanation for this. And I'm wondering if you can summarize that for, again, a lay audience. Well, the explanation she went into is very much a sort of population-based genetics, which, which is fine. The genetics aren't very difficult in this case. The, the gene that kind of codes for this protein as it's expressed, so the, the body has the code and it makes the protein and puts it up the cell wall. We, we think the protein's involved with the structure of the cell, keeping the shape of the cell. But it's on chromosome one, there are two linked genes. Um, it's not just the D antigen. There's actually several other antigens, other proteins that are all coded, linked together. There's a C and a, an E, and I think there's 50 of them. But the one that gets reacted to is D. So, mm -hmm. so what she's postulating, and it's guessing, is that there's a, a subset of people who are fairly... Um, fairly insular, and I, I guess it's very common in this Basque, southern uh, southern France, northern Spain area, and uh, that, that therefore you had a bunch of people that have this particular mutation or have had these things going on. We don't know. So, I mean, it's all guesswork, right, to where these things came from. It's just not genetically very um, interesting. Mm-hmm. There, there. At least there are. Would, would it be fair to say there are sort of genetic pathways toward understanding why some have it and some don't, even if we don't know sort of the the mechanics of of that. Oh, for sure. Um, wh whenever you have um, a particular mutation or a particular um, section of, of DNA code that one person has and another person doesn't, how that's passed on and this particular trait is very much a, um, the only way to be RH negative is essentially to be recessive. So it follows a really common recessive pattern that you're, you're not RH negative unless both your mom and dad are RH negative um, or have at least one of those genes. So, mm -hmm. so it's very difficult. And then the population skew of that follows pretty well. Um, I think 85% of the population is RH positive. And fifteen percent is Rh negative. All right. So just just so that I'm my my thinking is clear here, we have a blood cell that that there's something not on it, something absent. Okay. This this particular protein. So how can a thing that isn't there be passed on? In other words, it it sounds to me like I don't know how you can pass on something that isn't there. Okay. Is 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 the point. So how do we talk about that? Yeah, it's, a, it's actually um, a, a concept that argues against some of the theories that are going around that there's some added piece that you have because what RH factor negative actually is, is that you're missing a piece, right? Mm -hmm. You don't have the expression of this particular antigen. So if you don't have it, then the only way you're not going to have it is if your, your mom or your dad didn't have it on one of their chromosomes. Right. So you, the, what I'm getting at here, again, my reading of this was that this, this idea of an alien mating, okay, with a human being, the way this is popularly talked about is that the alien gives the human child, it contributes RH negative factor, which wouldn't make any sense because we're talking about an absence, not an addition, you know, something missing, not something around. added. That's right. The only thing you could think of, I suppose, you could you could postulate that someone was abducted and, and this gene was spliced out of them, like taken away. But it doesn't really work to think, think that something was added. Right. So the yeah, the interbreeding thing is sort of a misnomer. Right. Yeah. Well, let, let's jump in and bring everybody else in here. What did what did we all think of Tar's essay and, and anything else that we might have? you know, read in relation to this? Because, you know, I know a lot of you will use the articles that we uh, sort of assign as springboards. So we might want to talk about some of the claims that are associated with this 
that she does bring up, but we might have again more to add there. And then basically, how did we feel about the uh, her essay? Anybody can jump in. Well, this is Doug Overmeyer. I uh, I I had never actually heard of this theory until um, just like, like a couple of weeks after you uh, sort of sent out the first article, Mike. When my wife my wife works in uh, she's a licensed clinical professional counselor and works specializing w- with children who have been uh, abused and neglected. And most of her clients are in foster care. And so she came home one day and said, Oh my word, one of my, one of my kids, moms is, is crazy. And I'm like, well, that didn't surprise me. A lot of your kids, parents are crazy, but, um, she, she said, well, this one thinks she's an alien. I'm like, Oh, she said, yeah. Cause she has RH negative blood. I'm like, Oh, you're kidding. I'm like, uh, you're, where did she hear that? She said, I don't know, YouTube, I guess. And so she's just convinced, this lady is just convinced that she's an alien. And she told her social worker and she's told the state workers who are investigating the, the neglect and the abuse of her children. And which, by the way, is not something you want to tell someone who's investigating your parenting skills. But <laughs> it's 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 tragic. You know, it's like we're, I, I laughed, but then I'm like, this is just horrible. And she, she actually... To, to justify her her belief, she said, well, she, she had the, her bone marrow was tested and the doctors called it unremarkable. And see, they can't even remark on it. That's how weird it is. It's how, how alien oh, it boy. is. Yeah. And it's like we're talking pretty, I think, I think it's safe to say pretty low SES or social economic status, so low functioning people who are just desperate for some significance, I think. I, I don't really know where or how someone gets programmed to just interpret things that way and it was it's just it's just tragic that's not i mean this belief system is not why she lost her children but it, it's it probably plays into a really warped view of reality and i i don't know i well, it i could probably be used against her later on if she wanted to get them back i mean yeah it's right for sure well anyway i don't well who knows how that will all work out but i thought the article was very uh, it was very thoughtful and like, well, here are the claims. Let's just, just, just debunk them one at a time. And the genetics was a little over my head, but I, I, I think I've tracked along pretty well that it just seemed like these aren't a mystery. It's not alien. And then she even added Nephilim in there. Um, which, uh, because there's a whole segment of people who think that RH negative blood or just are evidence of Nephilim, uh, descendants, I think. And I, I thought it was very, I just like people should read this because when I started looking on the non-scientific sites about this, it was just it was like a hodgepodge of mythologies thrown together with some weird narrative to try to say you might be descended from an alien. And it's just really there's a better solution to finding significance in life than that. Hmm. Yeah, this is Gadawa. Um, I, I, you know, I also found the article very or the um, the piece very, very helpful and yeah, you know, it gets a little tough with the genetics at times, but she does a good job of going through the common myths that are connected. And and it's interesting because she, she was mentioning them, um, and so and I noticed they were the same things that I saw on these other you know wacky websites. And uh, some of the traits that have been commonly connected with this RH factor slash hybrid you know concept is. Uh, blue, green, or hazel eyes, mm-hmm. red or reddish hair, low body temperature, low pulse, low or high blood pressure, depending on which <laughs> website you're at, extra rib or an extra vertebrae, a vestigial tail. Now, these are not all necessarily – all these factors are involved in those individuals, but these are the kinds of traits that they think uh, are connected, as well as larger than average head or forehead. And then we get into some of the alien notions, which is unexplained body scars, Mm -hmm. unclonable blood, heightened senses, sensitivity to heat and sunlight, which also I think is connected to fairness of skin and stuff, and the ability to disrupt electrical appliances. So these are all the factors that she kind of goes through, as Doug said, one by one and, and, and answers them. And uh, so it was very, you know, it was a, a real good attempt to scientifically address these popular myths. And um, 
I too had never really, I never really looked into it. I'd heard about it in the background, uh, but I had never really looked, read up on it. So I found it a, a fascinating topic, but also with a dangerous side to it. Because when I first started hearing this notion of, you know, the the RH blood and 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 connection with aliens and Nephilim, my thought was, you know, jumping right to the danger of it is if people start really believing that there's like Nephilim among us, mm-hmm. think about, you know, we, we are in a highly polarized culture already. Things are being, being exacerbated, politics, social, everything's just being extreme and polarized with the other, the notion of the other. And you are the other. So, so I hate you. So I react against you. Well, now if you have people who into the Nephilim theory, and the Nephilim, you study it, and it's, you know, biblically at least, it's basically a negative concept, right? These are e- bad guys, basically. So now you're starting, these people are thinking, well, these people are Nephilim hybrids of some kind. They're bad. They're evil people. The, the logical end of this stuff is violence against these people, you know? And that's the danger that I felt when I first heard about it. Well, I, I've actually gotten emails not nothing recently. This is years ago, but I've actually gotten emails uh, that, yeah, basically call for. I hate to use the word, but I'll use it because that was what the email suggested: hunting down, you know, people who are are Nephilim descendants, you know, for elimination. Like like we're fulfilling a biblical mandate. Like like the the, the conquest narrative lives on you know, through us, and we're supposed to go hunt these people down. I, I've actually seen that, you know, it, so that that's not just sort of a, a speculative, you know, outcome of this. There, there are people who have mm-hmm. actually said such things. And it's, you know, and it, I, th- I, I it's think despicable. That the- yeah, but the violence in our culture, as we already see, is growing. Where the the environment is ripe for that stuff to be acted on. This is no. In sure. other words, you know, in the past, like you know, even five years ago, I would have just said, "Oh my God!" I mean, look, I'm I'm very skeptical, so I just like, "Oh, just another nutty thing." These people are nuts. But now I'm actually thinking, no, this is more than nuts because people are becoming actively violent against those with whom they disagree, and this is not. This is seriously. This has deep potential for for really serious problems in my in my mind. But of course, you know how far will it go? I don't know. I'm just saying. I I, I, I see it as one of the many elements of our society that's just uh, ramping up, if I can say that. The Alex Jones world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know that he's latched onto this one yet, but you know who knows. Anybody else? The other Doug impressions. Um, yeah, maybe I'll piggyback a little bit off of what Brian was saying. Um, you know, my, my overall thoughts of the article were that it was, it was actually really good. And I would, I would recommend people would read it as well if they can get a hold of it. But that said, my mind went to a few kind of, kind of things that, that hit me as, as a, so, so when I was doing the giant book, so this was several years ago and doing the research for it, you know, you kind of you go into the weird world of, of the Nephilim and, and modern mythology and stuff. And there's, there's some like uh, triggers that, that she spoke about that I started thinking, I, you know, I, I have a feeling that, that there's kind of a prior mythology that is going into the bloodline thing and she's like bringing it up. And so I can see people actually reading, um, you know, reading her article and, not listening to the things that she's saying because of it. So like one example would be um, the origin of the blue eyed people. She traces it back to the, you know, I think she's something like one uh, individual in the black sea region. So as I was studying for that book, you come across these people called the Kurgans. And uh, you know, if you've ever seen Highlander, the Kurgan is like the greatest of all the evil Highlanders and stuff like that. And depicted as a giant, so so the idea is that that these giant Kurgan people had these migrations that went into northern Europe from kind of that Black Sea area. Some of them ended up going to like the uh, Canary Islands, and the, you find the Gonch people 
that was brought up in the article. Now she's not bringing him up in a way to like, I don't even know that she has any idea that this is, this is stuff that's out there, but I could see somebody reading this saying, Oh, it's kind of feeding right into the, into the worldview and and you're bringing it up. And then, and then kind of the key, one of the other keys to me was um, because she seems to rely to some degree on an evolutionary view of, of, of the blood, you know, talking about um, pre Neanderthal kind of blood divergence and stuff like that. I could see somebody reading this and just dismissing that out of hand and then seeing these other triggers and just not listening to the article at all. And almost, almost, uh, you know, using the article as a way to, to uh, reinforce a previously held belief that, yeah, it is all about Nephilim bloodlines and stuff like that. <laughs> Dax, what do you, what do you think of that? How would you, you know, handle somebody? Okay. They read the article you know, this is sort of a, a quasi pastoral, but quasi, you know, academic, you know, issue as well. So somebody comes to you and says, Hey, you know, I believe I'm an alien, you know, and, and then you show them this article and then they come back and yeah, it talks about, you know, evolution in there. So I'm going to throw it out and I still believe I'm an alien. What, you know, what kind of response would you give um, to somebody like a, that? That's a really good observation. I do think that she's proposing kind of one possibility, which is a combination of, of Neanderthal or a little bit different variety of human and the different pieces there thereby. I don't think you have to go there at all in order to think through that it's not aliens. Um, there's a variety of other medical pieces that could be going on there that don't involve Neanderthals. I mean, that's, that's kind of, that, that piece of the article for her, in my view, was somewhat um, pulled out of thin air a bit. I mean, it's possible, but there are other possibilities. Yeah, it re- reflects certain presuppositions. Um, yeah. You, you know, now, now it was brought up about, you know, some of these traits. It, it may be a, a fruitful way of approaching it would be, well, you know, to this person, well, let's talk about the traits, you know, why, you know, the, the kind of things that are associated allegedly, you know, with this particular factor and then, oh, that reflects, you know, that we're aliens or, or something like that, you know, the, the extrapolations that are made, you know, it, it would certainly, I mean, again, I, I'm not, you know, into genetics to the extent that I really could follow everything in the article, but there are certain, I would agree. There are certain other ways to approach taking parts of, of the idea and showing them to be fallacious. Like she makes a comment on page nine about just as an illustration, the unclonable blood. And she says, well, that's due to a misunderstanding. Molecular cloning involves expression of genes, and there's no such thing as an RH negative gene. So, well, of course you can't clone this blood because there's nothing to clone, you know, at at that particular point or whatever. Um, So, you know, I I think there are other ways, you know, to, to sort of whittle away, you know, at sort of the predisposition to reject her work because of the evolutionary, you know, presuppositions, but somebody I else think, jump in. I think it, it, um, some of, you know, our young earth creationist friends would have, would, would really have it. They would, they would like, they, they suggest that people have lost information over time since humans were formed. And this just goes along with that. I mean, if, 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 uh, RH positive, blood has the the protein rh negative doesn't it lost the protein through a mutation i mean that's to me that's just that it distills it all down to that one issue and mm-hmm. and uh, through uh, if you want to say through the the intervention of the watchers or the nephilim or aliens or or whoever they didn't it just undermines that whole argument that it's just actually a genetic mutation it lost information um, in this one region of, of Europe during, you know, and they, I think they speculated or she speculated that it, some people think it, it, that mutation, uh, came because of a certain, uh, bacterial infection and maybe the body was trying to adapt Mm -hmm. to fight off this particular infection, which is pretty benign anyway. And so you don't really need it, but that was so long ago that, um, and, it's not an advantage. I mean, there's really no advantage to it, except that you can give blood to people. You know, it, 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 there's, it's, it, it's actually a negative 
um, because of the because of the pregnancy the pregnancy issue. So I, I just you know people who are searching for significance and like, well, I'm an alien. You know, this explains so much. This explains why I'm interested in the supernatural or why I, I you know cell phones lose their batteries whenever I touch them or, you know, or just all, all the little things that people are looking for a narrative, like, no, 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 uh, that's, those things may happen. I mean, you, you are interested in supernatural, but let me tell you why you're significant. It's because you're an imager of God, you know? And so it's like reframing the narrative to them. Like, let me just tell you what that means. I mean, God made you. And so on all the things that we, we talk about elsewhere, but yeah, then, then you, you know, you then, you know they're gonna they're gonna take that and say, well, yeah, the gods made me and all that kind of. But that that's a different discussion as opposed to the, you know, to something scientific. You know that right. there's it's related but distinct. It, my my answer that would shoot down all this. What I learned from this is that the uh, Rh factor is not exclusive to humans, but other animals like horses have it too. So yeah, you know that's kind of a big thing that I, I took away from it. Yeah, I I mean that would be kind of. I mean, that's absolutely relevant, you know, because the, the, they're trying to, you know, isolate it to this unique set of circumstances, you know, with the creation of, you know, humans, you know, the, the aliens take a primate and they fiddle with it genetically. And now we get homo sapiens, you know, that, that sort of thing, or this hybridization idea. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, anyway, like, like a summary statement, w would this be fair? It's, it's not disputed at all that the absence of the D antigen, the RH thing, was caused by a mutation. What Tar is doing is she's speculating on how that mutation occurred. So we have a we have two different things. They're different but related. We have a, a scientific, you know, genetic fact. The loss of this particular thing is going to be due to some sort of mutation because the presence of it is in most of the human population. So something had to happen. To, to create the absence, okay, some, again, genetic mutation. But what, you know, what, what, what is wide open, and again, she offers her own uh, speculation based on, you know, her, you know, her predisposition to certain evolutionary views. She's speculating on how it happened, and that's something we don't really need to embrace unless we, we care to, unless we're convinced by it for some other reason. Um, so there's there's the speculation of the how, but that doesn't mar or tarnish the fact of what happened, you know, some sort of mutation. Is that fair? The, the only thing I, I think there's a little more nuance or someone might take umbrage with you is, 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 is it's not necessarily a mutation as, as it's used in common parlance. Okay. A mutation is like, a, hey, there's one DNA pair that, that got swapped and therefore this protein isn't there. Because there's actually, you know, 40, 50 different antigens that are part of the RH complex. And mm -hmm. with these two linked genes, some people don't have many of them. So it's not like there was a single point mutation that okay. would allow for that to be a description. Yeah, and she's actually... a better word? Well, yeah, ahead, I was just going to read what she says. She says that she RH that. negative individuals do not have a separate evolutionary history. The D antigen expressed by the RH positive individuals is encoded by the RHD gene. This gene is a result of a duplication of the RHCE gene that occurred approximately eight and a half million years ago prior to the divergence of humans, gorillas, and chimpanzees. Yeah, yeah so I mean, is there a better word? I would say they, they don't necessarily have the same gene. And it could be due to, to mutation. It could also be due to miscoding. They're, I mean, she's trying to track it down in populations to say, mm -hmm. yeah, it's possible they came from different populations, right? That she's, yeah. she's not making the mutation claim. She's making the statement that there was actually a, a little bit different genetic code in this human mm -hmm. um, population millions of years ago. And, and that's been passed down. It actually... If you would substitute Nephilim for Neanderthal, I could see somebody saying, now, wait, look, I mean, it's possible, right? Yes. Because yeah. of those arguments. Mm -hmm. I, I think you don't have to go there. There's other reasons, good reasons, why um, it's not necessarily that. Could it be? Mm -hmm. Not not in the way you're linking them all together. But Yeah, but you, can, you can see where... where you can see where populations are a factor. I mean, I understand, you know, that's her angle, but 
I, I think, you know, some people assume that, it, you know, all humans have the same genes. Well, that, that isn't right. true. You know, it's, I mean, pick, pick a disease, you know, it just, that just isn't true. And so, you know, you have, again, this, you have humans, you know, breeding with humans. Okay. And then that you're going to have recessive traits and whatnot. So I mean, there, there is this population factor, but again, what, what you're saying is that's really not, you don't, you don't really need that explanation to explain presence or absence per se. You know, you, you, you might, bring it into the discussion when we, when you're talking about uh, a population group or versus another population group. But the difference itself is, you know, is sort of a thing that is, that is an issue before you ever get to the breeding kind of thing. Is that correct? That, that's the major issue to me. It's like human beings have a lot of differences and they're mm -hmm. passed on genetic differences. To me, that's the best way to think about these things is you think, Hey, we, we in populations tend to pass down different characteristics that are genetic. This is one of them. And the reason why, to me, it's become a conspiracy theory is because it's a rejection of mom and, and baby. Look, this is incompatibility, and actually one blood is attacking the other, and there's room yeah. there to... Yeah, as though that was an anomaly. You know, as though the yeah, genetic mismatch is an anomaly. Yeah, it's a, it's a question of the immune system, not really a question of, hey, are human beings different? Hmm. So what, what, what about other, I mean, anybody, please, you know, you know jump in here. I, I had a couple, I think Dax, you just got into one thing I put in my notes, like, like what, what's the best way to talk about this? And, you know, in, in one or two sentences, how would we summarize that, Hey, using RH negative factor to defend the idea of alien hybridization just can't be, coherent because i mean how how would we talk about that and then we, we can you know jump in on that but i also have a note to myself about pastoral um you know concerns here because we try to take these discussions into you know how do we deal with people who we meet you know either in church in the in the quote normal community or in the fringe community so uh, anybody feel free to to chime in on either of those dax how would you put it into a couple sentences Oh, I, I think those are really good questions that um, I, I would put it in. Hey, we, we all are have different things about us. And to say that RH factor is evidence of alien splicing or whatever it is, is the same as saying, why, why don't you pick blue eyes or why don't you pick some other characteristic? Because if things are passed down, and you're trying to trace it back. You're postulating, you're guessing the way of bigger question, I, I think someone said it already to me, is where are you finding your identity? And there are so many other important things. Our identity is in Christ. And to, to, to focus on ourselves in that way and to think that there's something there. But the difficulty in this area is that I don't think people are necessarily rational in that way. So, Well, they probably don't even know enough about genetics to, you know, to, you know I mean, there's this human and non-human dichotomy. Oh, I, I, I have this genetic thing that you don't, Therefore, you know, either I or you are are a product of, of an alien human union. In, in other words, not realizing that being a human doesn't mean having identical genetic stuff. I mean, we, we might think that that's self-evident, but apparently it's not. Yeah, I mean, why not pick sickle cell anemia? Why not pick mm -hmm. um, some other trait that people are, are different in in the blood even? and use that as your point of takeoff. So, yeah, what you're, I, so what you're saying is then that the, the, the lack of the, or the RH factor is simply just one more of the me multiple elements of genetic, a variation of genetic expression within humanity, that natural right. selection. So in other words, the microevolution of natural selection can still account for that you know, diversion of the fifteen percent and versus the eighty five percent and and it, you could even like in in a way she refers to macroevolution with the Neanderthal notion inter interbreeding with humans, but she also provides the microevolutionary notion of you know like was mentioned earlier you know with the Europeans and uh and and environment and all this kind of stuff can also affect that genetic variation expression right so is that kind of is that accurate to say that 
Absolutely, because this is a, a pretty much a simple recessive trait. So it follows that pattern very well. It's not something unusual in those regards. Microevolution, definitely. I mean, natural selection pieces or population genetics can, can account for that very easily. And she postulates a few of those. And uh, boy, yeah, for sure. Um, well, Mike, I have a question for you then. Um, since you're like uh, you're the expert on this particular issue, you know it does. How do you answer the Christian? You know, as a Christian who, who you know, I I believe the Bible does talk about this strange thing in Genesis about the sons of God interbreeding with women, you know, and they create the Nephilim, and and as your book even writes about. That's a bloodline theory that becomes the basis for the Israelites to destroy them because of their bloodline link to these Nephilim. So how do you address the claim that that's, that's a very similar sounding sort of uh, uh, holocaust or whatever you want to call it, uh, um, you know, uh, a, th- a racial theory of destroying people is, is that – was it good back then, but it's not now? How, how, how do you how do you work with that? Yeah, I, I would say that there's there's no there's there's a couple of thoughts here. Again, we in no particular order and no, I guess, particular particularly coherent presentation of it. Just throwing these things out. There's nothing in the text that would suggest that, you know, those members of the Nephilim bloodline interbred with non Nephilim. There's no commentary on that. The impression you get is you, you get you get certain of these individuals that are that are peppered throughout the general population, okay, of, of Canaan. But that that's about all you have. There, there's there's nothing that indicates that there would be some sort of cross fertilization for one thing. The, the, another factor is the Nephilim bloodlines are, according to scripture anyway, died out. So if without the the interbreeding, you wouldn't have these characteristics passed down if the lines die out or eliminated. So that that to me, again, if you're just going with what Scripture actually says, that wipes the the vestigial genetic stuff. Do we have it in our population? That wipes it off the table. If you're just going with what the, the text actually you know tells you, or at least you know you, you you can't build that argument on something that that's in the text because it's not in the text you know this idea of interbreeding you know there there were two things that made a nephilim you know offspring or one of the descendants different you know one was that internally if i can use that term their immaterial part according to all the traditions is this is a non-human spirit okay that 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 somehow that that's a factor and then you have the height issue, you know, some something unusually tall. And as I talk about an unseen realm, again, there's there's two ways, you know, to to look at this. There's the literal taking the language of Genesis six to be literal in breeding. The other way is to take the language of Genesis six and and see it as a as a, a euphemistic thing that somehow, you know, rival divine beings did something to certain humans or populations to you know, make them their own or raise up their own seed, you know, that kind of thing. Like we're told with, with that God does with Abraham and Sarah. There's no sexual contact there between God, God embodied or whatever. It's just we're, we're told that God enabled this to happen. We're not told how. So we have these gaps, you know, in, in, in but nevertheless, the, the, you have a second possibility here uh, because of, of what is described in the text, even though we have gaps in, in how this stuff worked. But to me, you know, I, I can't, if, if I wanted to prove this idea that there's a, a Nephilim bloodline and there's a genetic or vestigial genetic stuff that filters down and is still present in the population, I don't have a scriptural hook to hang that on at all. Okay. Because I don't have any reference to them, you know, again, cohabiting with non them. In, but in, in even even if you wanted to take that assumption that they that they interbred, as you point out in uh, reversing Hermon, one of the I think it's in Matthew, one of the genealogies of Christ points out that you have Canaanite women or people who lived amongst those communities that had uh, that had giant clans in or nearby, and they were in in the Lord's genealogy. So it's almost like you, if someone brings this up as an issue, well, just because it's, just because it, it doesn't say so, doesn't mean it didn't happen. Uh, yeah. Well, but then I'll look at, see, Jesus died for everybody who's human. 
and he doesn't really care what your genetics are. God doesn't really care who you gene- what your genetics are. Your gen- the only genetics that really matters is Jesus's, and you get, and so that's why you have to be in in the Lord through faith. So, like I just these people who in our society, the fringe people who are I, I've I've been told by some uh, people. Watch out for certain people in your church because they're they're going to be they're going to infiltrate and they're going to be kind of weird and they're going to you know they probably have nephilim DNA and that's just going to be Satan's army. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like these are the the people who need the Lord the most. I mean, not the most, but you know, what I'm saying they're the they're the ones the, the the ones who are ostracized from society. Like this this one client uh, that I referenced, she needs to find a she needs to be pastored. She needs to get into a church a community who can love her. And introduce her to the Lord, so she's not getting community on fringe websites. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, Jesus yeah, died for I, everybody. So I, I just like this whole modern Nephilim theory. It's just so it's it's so crushing because Jesus did what he did on the cross is enough. <laughs> you don't yeah, have and, to. And, and you'll, but I, again, that part of that that email I alluded to earlier was this. You know, like like identify them and their. You know, they're either, I mean, I, I've also gotten other emails that's like, oh, can Nephilim be saved, you know, because the, because of this belief, you know, uh, this vestigial genetics stuff, you know, th- this idea. But then, you, then you'll get the other ones that say, no, they can't, so they need to be eliminated. Mm. I mean, it's just that blunt. You know, so it, yeah, it it, it is crushing. I mean, it, it, in either respect, you know, how how people can can use argue at the best the best you got here is an argument from silence which isn't very good i mean paul never mentioned it and, uh, i mean the origins of rome was so supposedly the uh, the union of a god and a human right i mean mar uh, remus and and uh, boy my mythology just went out of my head but that's the origin of rome and so that's where supposedly that's what the, the roman empire is based on paul never never once when you talk to the gentiles ever express any concern he only preached jesus he didn't preach well because you're descendant of you know uh, of a god and a human mating you know in, in roman mythology therefore you don't you're not qualified i mean if yeah. paul didn't mention it then why are we talking about it actually from paul's perspective the gospel in the new testament it's kind of it's kind of the reversal of the whole concept of genetics anyway right because it's it's from every tribe and every nation every clan and you know and and so in a way he's saying f- people from all genetic sources at least from within from from within their own worldview however much they understood it at that time right so in a very real sense he is saying uh, there is no genetic component to salvation whatsoever all nations and all tribes, which could also include the clans of the Nephilim, maybe. <laughs> well, it certainly yeah, I mean, if are each negative. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the gospel's I, not for them. Yeah. You know, I this whole, Mike, this whole, Mike, go ahead. Yeah, Mike, you, you made a point earlier that I think is really important that um, when the speculation is going on, it's, it's moving out of the Bible. Now it might be, it might be, you know, have some fairly close kind of, sources to it um but you're moving out of the text itself and you really are moving into the realm of mythology and so you're creating your own mythology out of this hike like hybrid of some biblical text and then mythological text to just create this modern mythology of uh, you know of your own making and it might sound you know really coherent and some of it some of it frankly can be quite coherent but it doesn't mean that it's corresponding to reality. And I think that's pretty important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can, like I, I did in the, in the, I don't know if you guys read the the second novel, the portent, you know, it, I actually use um, some, you know, scholarly journal literature from the 19th century by, by a guy named Paul Haupt, who was a leading Semitist of the day and, and used his arguments as part of the storyline for Jesus being a non-Jew. You know that, and this was this was this was peer. I didn't have the peer review process then, but you get the idea. They, this was you know academic stuff, you know respectable academic stuff in the late nineteenth century, where he is making you know different you know arguments to divorce Jesus from the Jewish population, and it's the same era. You know when you get, you know a lot of the the, uh, I'm trying to put it generously, a lot of the the responses you know, to 
the age of discovery, you know, when you, when you have all these other population groups, you know, you got people, human beings being discovered in all sorts of places that the Bible doesn't mention. Well, we got to find that in the Bible somewhere, you know, and, 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 you know, using the Bible to sort of, you know, standing the Bible on its own head to accommodate these discoveries produces all sorts of weird racial theories. And then out of that, there's this preference for European bloodlines. And then out of that, you know, the Germans just take this and do the Nordic thing, you know, the master race idea, you know, and, and trying to, to marry Jesus to this work, again, because of, a, of an anti-Semitism that has a number of, you know, causes. So this is my big concern, you know, with, with a lot of this. It's not, it's not the, the goofiness, even though that, that's concerning and it can be soul crushing and, you know, we can, we can sort of joke about that, but I'll also still mean it. But it, it is that this is another example of thinking that can be used to not only just divide people and pit them against each other, but can, you know, it, it just becomes like support, quote unquote, support for these old anti-Semitic and racial superiority ideas, whether you marry them to Jesus or not, it, it, it's just fodder for that. Um, and, and I could, you know, thank goodness you know, that, that, that the Nazis didn't have advanced genetic knowledge or else they would have used this stuff as an argument, you know, for, for what they were doing. Um, you know, it, it's just, it's like repeating itself. Here we have another cycle of, of this kind of thought and, and our culture is just sort of, you know, open to it, or at it's least every, at least large groups are. It's primed to it. Some of these yeah. uh, fringy articles are very Gnostic in how they, you know, the, the ancient aliens and trying to ascend to a higher, like the RH negative people are priming the society to descend to the next level of enlightenment or whatever. I mean, it's just, I was like, man, that's just like, that's right out of, that's uh, right. You're discovering your own divinity. Yeah. Yeah. It's, well, it's, not it's just, just Gnosticism. Positive side, right? Not just the positive <laughs> side. You get the negative side of, of there's some evil piece to your physical body. Whatever. Yeah. That yeah. Is. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's funny. Yeah. Like there's this whole the whole the, this is going in two completely opposite directions from the very same kind of twisting of the story. So you've got like the Aryan stuff on the one side mm -hmm. with the anti-Semitism of. You know, and some of these guys are writing Atlantis books and getting into the Nephilim and stuff. But then you've got, you know, you can trace back and do the very same thing, but opposite. So, like, you can find very easily sources that will tell you that, look, the Egyptians talked about the Anakim as being blonde haired, blue eyed. And, you know, very, you know, obviously that's got to be the giants from the Bible. So there's the whole blonde haired, blue eyed thing. And so that's the Nephilim connection. But, no, the Nephilim in the Bible, like Brian said earlier, well, they're completely evil. So instead of having it being this like incredibly good thing because they're Aryans, now all of a sudden it's the exact opposite. And all of the Europeans are completely evil because they're the ones who are descended from the Nephilim. And it's like, you know, there's there's just no there's no sense to any of it. One, one article I read said uh, that Japheth had been killed and replaced by a Nephilim and, you know, and the, he had RH negative blood. And that's why he went up to descend uh, or up to settle in Europe. And that's why 40 percent yeah. of northern Europeans have RH negative blood. Uh, all this just nonsense. I'm like, who? I, it's just unbelievable. This mythology. You're right. It was a mythology people are creating and they're latching on to it to give them meaning. And, and it's scary where, where people can take it. Yeah, I mean, instead of using scripture as a either a polemic or a corrective to a a specific set of ideas that that the biblical writers you know shared a certain worldview, but it, instead of using the, the the biblical version of that stuff as again a corrective commentary or polemic, uh, you know, in this pool of ideas, I, what I fear is that you have Christian researchers that are creating marriages. You know, intellectual marriages between the Bible and this other stuff, and so then the Bible loses its its status as again something that um, you know is is a is a corrective commentary, and it just becomes one of 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 all the other myths, and and in fact because the Bible has, still has this virtue association, now it can legitimize these other mythologies. In other words, it, it it'll work in the opposite direction. And and I just I see too many Christians that are 
are using the Bible to defend ancient alien ideas, thinking that this helps the Bible. But what it really does is it it amounts to an endorsement of the other stuff. Again, because the, this virtue association is still there, um, yeah. you know, within a lot of within a lot of people. I don't know if any of you guys have ever seen this. It, it's kind of related. It goes back to what I think it was Doug talking earlier about the origins of Rome. Remember, he goes into one of the towns in Galatia, in Galatia, and they call Barnabas Zeus, and they call um, Paul Hermes. Mm-hmm. And uh, so if you go and you read the book of Galatians, there's this really strange verse where it talks about how he couldn't heal himself. Uh, he couldn't get well. Mm-hmm. And, and it's kind of surrounded by the gospel. Well, now all of a sudden you start connecting the dots. Well, who is Hermes? Well, he's, among other things, he was the god of healing. And it's like, it's like what, what Paul is saying there is that here's your mythology of who you thought that I was, and God's going to do something to me to prove that, that's, that your mythology is completely wrong. And he's not doing anything, though, with the gospel message, like was said earlier. He's not saying, well, you know, it's only going out to some of you because some of you are, are, are human and, and the rest of you aren't. And that whole idea of, of Hermes and Zeus plays completely into that. Hmm. That's really good. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it's it's really subtle, you know. That very subtle, yeah. Yeah, you know, but again, if 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 that's what's floating around in your head, people are going to pick it up. The the the, the initial, you know, the original hearers and readers would have picked that up. You know what what Paul's doing there. So I I guess again by way of you know summary, we can we can wrap up you know the episode here. You know, here we go again. You know, we have this this really you know, fringe belief. And ag- again, it, it's based upon, yeah, there's certain presuppositions that go into it. And I think just a, a lack of, of understanding, not only um, just genetic makeup in general, but also, uh, as Dax pointed out, there there are alternate explanations, you know, for how this difference, you know, in, in the human population you know, would have arisen. There, there, there's nothing about this topic. There's nothing about the 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 absence, you know, of RH, this particular antigen that speaks to non-human origin. You know, th- this is all, you know, accountable scientifically within the human family, uh, just by genetic variation. You know, and and, and like uh, you know, a number of you you guys have pointed out. Well, why not pick this thing? Why not pick that thing? Uh, I, the answer is because those things are negative. <laughs> you know, we're not picking sickle cell anemia because that you know we don't like that. You know, we'll, we'll gravitate toward high IQ, you know, or something like that, or some sensitivity, you know, something that 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 more easily slides into the, the this paranormal world stuff, um, you know, or you know, even the red hair, you know, like with with you know giant mummies and stuff like this or, or sort of out of place, you know, mummies that have red hair or that we, you know, again, people just assume that it's out of place. How do you know that it's out of place? You know, all this stuff that there, there's some connection point into the, this sort of middle world of the strange and that, Oh, that, that must be an indicator. And, and if I have that, then I'm, I'm special as opposed to, again, some, you know, some negative, you know, disease factor or something like that. So I, I would, I mean, I would, I would assess this as just being sort of that simple. This is a known thing. Science under, understands what it is. It, it's all within the human family. It's genetic variation. There's nothing unusual about that. We may not know in in the history of humanity, you know, how the genetic variants occurred, but who cares? Like, again, we, we, we know that there's nothing about the absence of this antigen that calls for a, a, a non-human point of origin, uh, that sort of thing. So I, I think, I mean, that's where I'm, you know, that's, that's where I'm landing. That's how I'm summarizing it in my head. Anybody else have anything to, to add just by way of, you know, wrapping it up and summarizing it? Well, this is Gadawa. I just wanted to point out that um, uh, for those who, who are interested in reading more about this, since we can't have the actual article we're referencing, um, if Trey would put up that one article, Mike, you sent us, it was called Why RH Negative is Not Blood of Gods or of Alien okay. Origin. I yeah. thought it was very, I like that because it was, it, it was very layman expression 
a lot more understandable in some ways than than what we were reading and very helpful in terms of trying to give some of this scientific understanding and explanation and um uh so i would i would recommend people check that out if you guys can put that yeah, link we'll, up there we'll post that on the episode page certainly well thanks everybody for coming you, you know, I think uh, I think people who are sort of drawn into this, I hope this is going to be helpful. I think it will. So thanks for taking the time again. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. You bet. And Dax, it was great hearing from you. Hey, thanks really? for having me, guys. Really yeah, nice. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for doing it, Dax. You're fantastic, Dax. Dax! Uh, Jesus. <laughs> <it. laughs>